to Gruber Motor Company. I'm Pete Gruber. We are here at Roadster Central with lots of Tesla Roadsters up on lifts, down below getting repaired. You can see a variety of uh, services taking place here. Lots of battery service, lots of working on electronics. And uh, these Tesla Roadsters actually were originally released in 2008. They were in development sometime before then and weren't quite ready yet to be released. Some of the history that we have here is the uh, Roadsters were really the, um, a Lotus Elise, which was created by Lotus in the UK. And uh, when Tesla was first deciding to build Tesla Roadsters, they went to a number of uh, manufacturers to try to buy sports cars to electrify them. And Lotus is the one that stepped up to the plate and said, okay, we'll sell you 2,400 Lotus Elises and you can electrify them to your heart's content. What Tesla originally did, which was Martin Eberhardt and Mark Tarpening and the team, was um, use a drivetrain from a T0, which was a electric sports car built by AC Propulsion Systems. What we have here is a cutaway version of a T0 and it had 28 lead acid batteries in the doors and underneath the area where the power electronics module or the inverter was. Originally, Tesla decided that this would be the drivetrain that they would use to uh, power or convert this Lotus Elise to an electric vehicle. What they ended up having to do was develop their own drivetrain because this old analog drivetrain had too many bugs. So they ended up going to a company in Taiwan, Chroma, and had them build the equivalent of a three-phase inverter. And that's what made the Roadster finally operate successfully. They also got rid of all of the lead-acid batteries, all 28 of them in this T0, and instead converted one of these T0s to cylindrical 18650 lithium-ion cells which Martin Eberhardt was familiar with because he had just sold an e-books business and essentially decided to use laptop batteries, which is what they were called back then. That dramatically changed the range of this car from 80 miles to almost 300 miles. And now they knew they had a viable sports car, EV sports car that they could mass produce. The um, in-between getting Lotus Elises from the UK they ended up getting one that they converted as a test mule using the AC propulsion drivetrain. This car is currently on display at the Peterson Auto Museum and it's a 2005 Lotus Elise test mule that sports the T0 inverter and motor assembly. And uh, it is currently being restored. The owner is Sam Reed uh, from uh, Boston, Massachusetts and uh, the car will eventually be on display in a variety of different places besides the Peterson Museum. And now we're going to cut over to Sam Reed, the owner of the 2002 Lotus Elise test mule that was the genesis of the Tesla Roadsters which were to come later. Welcome to Group Motor Company. My name is Richard and this is? I'm Sam, I'm with the Electrified Garage. And we're here standing in front of mule number one. Yep. All right. So so this is the Tesla Mule 1. It's basically the missing link between the T0 over here and the Tesla Roadster as it became over there. Uh, as you see, the, the essentially the clay model and then the actual uh, engineering prototype. Now, the original idea out of Tesla was to find a light vehicle that could be electrified and be exciting. And at the time uh, that, that the company was founded, and that's in the, you know, the very early 2000s, uh, Lotus had just come out with the Series 2 Elise. Uh, this was the first version of the Elise that was going to be federalized for use in the United States. Uh, it's built on top of a bonded aluminum tub that weighs about 180 pounds, if my memory serves. Uh, extremely light, extremely rigid chassis. And so uh, my understanding, and, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of liberty with the story because I'm going based on what I know, doesn't necessarily mean it's true, is that uh, the, the, the original founders of Tesla saw this car 
Uh, they had a, a relationship with Lotus, given that they do contracting work all over the world for all kinds of companies, and thought this could be the perfect platform. This is a beautiful, exciting race car. Uh, you can tell the, look, the looks are simply stunning, even now, 20 years later. This is a 2002. Uh, it looks like nothing else on the road. So you can imagine if you could stick 250 plus horsepower in this thing with instant torque, you'd have one heck of a race car. Oh, yeah. Of course, it's a mid-engine car out of the box. So looking back here at where the motor and battery box are, um, you can tell it's pretty much perfect for an electric conversion. Uh, this is an AC150 powertrain, just like the one in the T0 behind us. Uh, you've got the PEM on top here, you've got the battery box underneath, and then you've got the motor with a Honda, a Honda transaxle, it's basically just a gear reduction here, and that drives the rear wheels. So what you would actually have is somewhere around 150 to 170 kilowatts, which comes out to about 200, 210 horsepower, uh, being driven directly to the rear wheels with an ungodly amount of torque, um, being fed by essentially a handmade uh, box with an array of Panasonic 18650s that J.B. Straubel probably put together in his backyard. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one picture of him putting together the battery box and that's all we have to go on. Oh, wow. um, and it literally looks like his backyard on, on, on like an outdoor uh -huh. uh, uh, metal table. Wow. Um, so when, when I got this car, uh, it was stripped. To my understanding, the majority of the parts are in the Mule 2. That may or may not be true. Uh, but we do know for sure that this car had an AC150 in it, it had a, the custom battery box, and we were able to procure another AC150 and modify it. Essentially, we had to recut this aluminum plate here uh, in order to mount it into the car. And uh, uh, obviously, it fit perfectly because that's what was in this car mm -hmm. um, for quite some time. So this sort of became the test mule and the proof of concept car for Tesla. Um, it clearly wasn't fit for public use. Uh, you couldn't fit enough battery in it. If you look at the, the length of the car and sort of where the rear axle comes in and where the passenger compartment is, basically your head comes to about here. And then you've got the drivetrain behind there and there was of course a firewall. Um, it's just not enough room for a battery box. Um, the, the frame basically curves in around the rear axle here and so what you end up with is a trapezoidal battery box shape and it's just it's just essentially not enough room you could potentially encroach on some of the trunk space and uh, find a way to sort of indirectly drive the rear axle mm -hmm. but of course they came up with a much more logical solution which was just to lengthen the body yeah so my understanding is the roadster is what two and a half inches longer I think than the Elise Five, is it five? five? Good to know. Yeah. Uh, significantly longer. Mm -hmm. uh, the battery fits much better. The passenger compartment, of course, is longer. Uh, my personal theory is that it's because Steve Gervetson was an early uh, investor, and I think he's what five 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 six or sorry six six uh -huh. six five six six. Um, I'm six two. I barely fit in this car. Um, I, I have an Exige that I used to drive around, and I, I'm, I have to peer underneath in order to see the traffic lights. Uh, it's a total mess. You, it's just not really fit for mass market. And uh -huh. they were going for something that, you know, Elon's kind of a tall guy. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the people around the periphery were tall people. So if you can lengthen the passenger compartment, lengthen the room for the battery box, and then of course we know they lowered the door sills, uh -huh. uh, you could make really a much more livable car, which is what this became. Yeah. Um, and talking with Dave Morris earlier, uh, he, he said something sort of funny, which is that so many people believe that the Roadster is mostly a lease. Mm -hmm. and, and it's one of the things that sort of annoys him about the project because obviously they put a lot of work into yeah. that car. And, and he and I were talking and of course, when you get into a Roadster, what do you do, right? You open the door mm -hmm. and you put your leg in and you sit down and you see the mirror, the dash, and and the windscreen. Yeah. 
and those are basically the only parts that were carried over from the elites, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the, the primary things that you interact with are elites, but everything else ended up getting changed. Yeah, and, I think the, the number is 7% of, yeah. of this car, is, yeah. or the Roadster is elite. And of course it depends very much on how you calculate that. Yeah, I think he said 4%, but who knows? Yeah, who knows? Some, yeah, right. Between 4 and 7%. I've, I've heard 7 more than yeah. I've heard 4. Um, but it, it was enlightening for us as, as we were fitting these parts back in here and fabricating uh -huh. this battery box, which is unfortunately empty. It's just an empty box in there right now. Yeah. Um, to sort of see like, oh, this is uh, rough. You know, this is this is not going to work for a mass market car. I, I would estimate, and it's just back in the envelope, we might be able to fit 30 kilowatt hours in the back of this thing, which, you know, back in the envelope math, maybe 120, 140 miles of range, uh, maybe a little better if you're hypermiling it, but who wants to do that in this yeah. car? Yeah. But it is enough. Imagine I'm Elon Musk, and I'm almost as good looking, right? I get into this thing with an investor, and I pump out, you know, maybe we overclock the motors a little bit, right? We let them run a little bit hot. Let's say we're doing 200, 240, 250 kilowatts output, and just screaming the tires, uh -huh. right? Is that a company you want to invest in? Totally. Hell yeah. 100 percent. Hell yeah. And of course, there are pictures. This this is one of the pictures from their investor deck. Uh, this is one of about eight or nine that we actually have. But we have an old investor deck. It's believe it or not, it's a shockwave flash file which is actually kind of hard to open these days. <laughs> but we got through it and it has an embedded video of them just screaming down one of the back alleys. Oh, wow. And, and you can imagine like what a trip that must have been, the noise and the immediate torque at a time when nobody had ever experienced it. Because I'm sure you can remember your first time in a fast electric car. It's totally. Like, like, totally. Holy hell, this oh, yeah. is something. This is something. So, I, I mean, I can only imagine the feeling. And, I mean, honest God, it obviously worked because they got an awful lot of money and an awful mm -hmm. lot of goodwill and an awful lot of, uh, I guess you would say, leeway, mm -hmm. uh, benefit of the doubt from their customers because, yeah. you know, they were so late and so over budget and they made it so expensive, but people still wanted it anyway. Um, and that's, that's something really special that, you know, you make something that unique and that new and mm -hmm. that sort of world changing. Oh, yeah. Um, people will crawl over one another to get one. So it doesn't matter if you, you know, if you said it was 80,000 and it's gonna be 140,000 uh -huh. and you deliver it three years late, it's still the best damn thing you can buy. Absolutely. So that's the story. Well